I just want to call out for the green room brief. I'm going to pick this up. This is this is silly. Uh, brief call out for the green room who just ran all the way to the green room, converted a slide deck, re-downloaded it onto another laptop, brought it back, and I've got it working now. It I'm, I'm just going to give you a heads up that I suspect there might be some AV trouble today. We haven't quite got all the kinks out of it, and this may happen again. So sorry for anyone who's speaking, and sorry if you have problems. Uh, fingers crossed we'll fix it quickly. Anyway, hello. Welcome to Electromagnetic, electromagnetic Field. We're back. <laughs> it's really lovely to see you all again, uh, as much as I can with a bright light in my face. But it's, it is genuinely lovely to have everyone back. It's, um, we spent a long time building this up and planning it. And there's a point, probably some point yesterday, where we suddenly realized that it's not just us in the field anymore. You've all shown up, and you're doing things. And it's, it's really nice. It's also very stressful. But it's, it's great to have you here. Um, I'm John T, and, but I'm only one of the people who on the team that we have a team of literally hundreds of people who worked on the event this year. Uh, it's shocking. <laughs> and many of those people have been working on the event for more than a year, almost continuously in the background and then very intensely for like the last three months. But it's a lot of work. They all need recognizing. I'm sorry that I can't bring all of them up here. We try at the end, but they're out driving telehandlers and fixing things, and the generator's gone wrong, whatever. But it's, you should know that this is a huge team, and they all need congratulating. So if you see people walking around looking very stressed, don't bother them, because that doesn't help. But if you see them later on, say thank you. Um, and I want to take a brief moment to say thank you to all of the team who've done it this year, because this has been... I, I, I realize that I will immediately be uh, going against this in my next few slides. This has been the easiest year ever in terms of planning for many things, and the smoothest way this has gone. Yeah, and yeah. But genuinely, the teams have done an incredible job. It's been astonishing. And like, this is the best stage A we've ever had. This looks fantastic. And it's true across the whole site. Everything looks brilliant. It works brilliantly. It, it's just great. So... <laughs> I did say that was going to happen. So, <laughs> so the thing is that we're lucky this year. Um, every year, I, I, I start out this opening ceremony, and it's become sort of tradition. I get on the stage, and I'm like, it's been the worst year ever. It's been terrible. Like, people have died. It's just, you know, it's really horrible. Um, and this year, yeah, there were, there were risks, and it's been hard, and it's, it's been tricky. But we were lucky. Um, this year, as of, I think, yesterday, there are 43 festivals in the UK that have gone bankrupt, shut down, have not made it. They are not running this year, including the one that is happening one month from now on this, this festival site, and they cancelled last week. So we made it through, and we made it through mostly because of you. You supported us in 2020, you supported us since, you have made sure that we were looked after, and... To everyone who gave your ticket to us, your ticket price, and instead of asking for a refund in 2020, you're part of the reason we're still here. And the, there is so little support for live events right now. There is no support from the government. There is no support for the risks that you have to take to do this, and the costs have gone up, and it's just got harder. So thank you to all of you for doing this, and thank you for coming back. Um, <laughs> So I also normally like to show a time lapse of EMF being built. And I can't do that this year because all the tents showed up early, which was unexpected. <laughs> it's never happened before. Unfortunately, so did the rain. And we had an entire month of rain in one day. It was horrendous. So the site, as you can see in this picture, looks lovely and green. There's a few tents there. But you can probably start to see there's, there's some tracks appearing on the ground. And it, it was not great. And it got worse fairly quickly. And for the team who've been on site for the last 10 days at this point, they've had a rough time, and most of them are quite dirty, uh, because the mud, you can't tell now, was really bad. Now, I would have a video to show you of what was going on, but unfortunately, because we just had to download it, you've got a nice screenshot of a video instead. So imagine this telehandler churning its wheels, desperately trying to get out, and Michael looking very sad. That, that was a whole week just everywhere, all the time. We, we had vehicles stuck, 
all the time. In fact, we had somewhere in the region of 40 plus vehicles get stuck. And Pez, who, who's uh, one of our team, took photos of all of them, and I was going to show all of them, and there were so many, I just couldn't really fit them on the screen without it looking absolutely terrible. So you're going to have to trust me that it was just awful all the time. Now, I'm sure some of you actually did get stuck in the car park already, or you will on the way out. I'm very sorry in advance. But it's, it's been a rough build, but everything else has gone reasonably well, and the site has recovered now. Hopefully, there's no more rain. <laughs> um, and it looks beautiful. This is from yesterday. I... So I think this is about probably five o'clock. People are still building everything, and it's, but it looks absolutely lovely. So I'm hoping for this weather to carry on throughout the whole weekend. Uh, I'm sorry the people who are normally in the north of the site who loved the ducks in the past. There are no ducks, but I know. But there is a robot submersible in the lake instead, so go and find that. <laughs> I don't know if it quacks, sorry. So this is the point where I have to get you to sign up to do things. And hopefully lots of you already have. I'm, I'm aware that we are at 61% of volunteer shifts filled for the festival already, which is the highest we've ever had. So thank you so much already. But everybody who organized this festival, everyone who has had anything to do with it, we are all unpaid volunteers doing it technically for fun. <laughs> at least that's what I tell myself. They all bought their own ticket. They all worked to do this and we need you to put some time in now. If we don't get the volunteers to fill all the shifts, we end up doing it, and it's bad for everyone. The experience will be worse. We need you to do this. If, every, if only 50% of the people at a festival do one shift, that is everything covered. We don't even need all of you to do it, but please sign up for one shift, doing something at the bar, helping out in the car park, standing on stage with me with AV not working, whatever, you, know, you can do any of them. They're all available. Um, it gets you a hot meal in the volunteer kitchen. It also gets you a guaranteed ticket to the next event. It is the best way to get a ticket to the next DMF if, if you think you do want to come back. So do one shift. You sign up on the website, they're available now. Plenty of shifts. We've been astounded by how keen you all were this year to come back and how keen you were to do things. We had three times more content submitted to our call for participation than any year ever. Three times, and I don't understand why. <laughs> and it was all good. Like, the, the talk schedule is amazing, the workshop schedule is amazing, it's all great. We have 114 villages doing things across the site, which I think is, again, probably three times what we've had in the past. And it's not like we've got that many more people, you've just more organized or something, I don't know, it's really good. <laughs> but, Given all that, I've, I've had quite a lot of conversations with people in the last few weeks where they're like, how do I optimize my time at EMF to do the most things? How do I see everything? At which point, I have to point out, there are, it would take you 12 days to watch all of the talks, continuously. Like, it's not, well, and workshops. You can't do it. So just go and explore. Go and see a couple of things you want to see. Go and find all the things the villagers are doing. Go and explore the weird installations that pop up. I guarantee it, like three o'clock in the morning, there'll be someone doing something by the lake you'll never see again, and you can't describe to anyone. But... <laughs> I didn't say anything there. That was you. <laughs> so please do explore, please see everything. Don't just go and see talks. You're seeing a tiny fraction of the festival and you are missing out by doing that. Make sure you explore. I'm also really pleased to say, say that we're keeping to our promise from 2022 and we are publishing the speaker diversity stats for all talks and all workshops. We are doing this publicly from now on. We are keeping ourselves to account. We didn't do as well this year as we hoped with attracting new people, but we are working on that. And we have a session on Sunday where if you want to come and give feedback and talk about it, we're there for that. And our blog currently has a long post about this and what we're doing to make it better in future events. But it's important to a lot of people and we want to make sure that we are holding ourselves up and saying we're not doing as well as we should be. This is where we are and this is where we're going. So there's many new things to see around the festival, of which I will see a very small amount. But 
I wanted to call out a couple of things that I think are worth you going to see, because we've put a lot of effort into them. The first one is that we've changed how we're doing the arcade. Now, everyone's probably familiar. Say everyone, lots of people are new. The arcade is not traditionally old arcade machines, uh, which is great, it's lovely, but it's not showing off what people are doing now. And we didn't feel it was right for EMF to just bring in old things all the time that don't change. So this year, we've done it differently. We are bringing in uh, a new set of arcade machines that we have built ourselves. A small team has done this in a very short, a small amount of time. It was probably not a very good idea, but we did it anyway. <laughs> and we have over 33 games that have been come from uh, EMF attendees. We have physical machines, we have video games, all sorts of things. Uh, and we reached out to the indie game community and got them to submit games as well. And they, they've all willingly contributed. This isn't just stuff we bought or anything. Uh, of, of, of those games, over half of them were created by people from historically underrepresented groups in games. So we have tried to address that up front because the games industry is not diverse in any way. So it's important to us that you see which ones those are, and you will find in the arcade every single game has a small plaque next to it explaining a bit about the creator, the game, and allowing you to find out more information. And you'll also find these games all across the site. The bar, down in Null Sector, all sorts of places have games that you can find and experiment with, and they all have information so you can find out more about the people. The creator of the wildly popular Lunar Lander game from EMF 2022, which some of you may remember from the bar, has a new game in the bar this year, which is even more irritating. <laughs> but uh, I, I recommend you play it. The, the thing that I enjoyed most about this is that apparently that game was put on public display after EMF last time. And just to cover this briefly, anyone who didn't see it, it's, it's Lunar Lander, the very old game, but it's a mechanical, physical version of it. It's very beautiful. And he put it on display in Southwold Pier. And he, apparently, it was just too hard. And it was too hard because it was built for EMF and put on display here. And then people kept beating the high scores, so the, the hardness got turned up. <laughs> and then it, it, it got put on display, and they had to turn it down, and then turn it down again, and again, and again, <laughs> because everyone here is terrifyingly good at games. <laughs> so my request is, if you can beat all the high scores on the games that are here now, we've got something to try for next time. So. <laughs> But go and look for them. The other things we have are, we have an EMF film festival. It runs in stage C every night. Some of you may have seen the test screening last night. Um, that has a new film container, which you will find somewhere over by the bar, showing short films and uh, digital artworks, all sorts of things that have been selected by us for you to go and watch when you just need some downtime. Uh, that's an experiment for us. We'd love to get some feedback on it after the event. And then finally, the part of the festival site has been taken over by an unusual facility, as usual. Those of you who know what this means, you know where to go. Those of you who don't, when it gets dark, you'll know where to go. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's different. You'll, we'll see what it's like. There's many other things that have happened this year, and I'm only covering a small section of them, but one of them that we're particularly proud of is that back at EMF in 2012, when we first started out, Running an internet connection to a field was difficult and stupid. <laughs> but it was very important that we could get on the internet, so we did that. So this is the radio tower that we had at one end of our uh, three-kilometer microwave link we had to get the internet to a muddy field in Milton Keynes under a motorway bridge. And it ran at 370 megabits. There was a lot of internet back then. That was, oh, so much internet. We were very excited. And we've upgraded it a bit. We, we had a gigabit multiple times. But this time, we've really, really upgraded it. So this time, this is how many radio towers we would need. <laughs> this time, we have a 40 gigabit internet connection to the field. <laughs> which is approximately 108 times faster. You all have direct access to this. Please don't do anything bad. <laughs> really, please don't do anything bad. <laughs> To achieve this, we now own a 61-kilometer piece of fiber that runs all the way to Gloucester. <laughs> and I'd really like to thank the sponsors that helped us do that, because it's absurd. Um, but we really want to stay on this festival site, because that's now a thing that we own. <laughs> if you'd like to know more about this, there is an infrastructure talk on Sunday afternoon. I think it's at uh, 5 o'clock. Please go along. They will give you all of the extreme detail on how we pulled this off, along with everything else on the site, which is 
far, far too much detail for now. We also have the badge. We made a badge again. And we did it differently this time. So most of you probably know about this. For those who don't, it means you haven't, you're not getting one. Um, <laughs> every year we make a unique badge for all the attendees. And it's always electronic. It's different. The, the aim of it is to give you something to play with, something you haven't experimented with before, something to interact with at the event. Um, and it's supposed to be uh, both sort of a gift and an experimentation platform. But this just isn't sustainable. We've been doing this for 12 years. I couldn't remember then. Um, and a lot of them just end up in a drawer. They're not used. It's not useful. And we were beginning to feel really bad about the amount of waste we were generating. It, it wasn't OK with us. So we decided to change what we were doing. And at one point, we had just decided that everyone was getting a bit of cardboard and a Sharpie. But <laughs> after longer discussion, we decided that we'd like to just try a different approach. So the badge this year is designed to be sustainable. And this is our badge going forward. This is it. We have the same badge at every event going on, but it's upgradable. Its bits can be replaced. Every event will have a bit that we swap out to improve it, and we will hopefully be introducing new functionality, other bits and pieces. But we hope this is going to be something that everyone gets excited by. And given the feedback that we've had and what we've seen people doing quietly, which I'm very excited to see in person, we think it's going to work out. So the most exciting thing about this badge is that on each of the faces of the hexagon is a slot. Uh, it's called a hexpansion slot because we like a pun. And that slot can take everything from an electronic circuit board to a piece of card. doesn't really matter. But they're designed for you to customize it and build your own things to go into it. And we have seen people building these, many, many of them in advance already. And if you walk around the site, you will see GCHQ, not that GCHQ, have installed uh, posters all around the site with the small circuit boards hanging on them, and they plug into your badge. They're part of a puzzle. There are many of these things. And you'll probably find quite a few over the weekend, including these lovely googly eye ones, which I'm very fond of. <laughs> uh, I haven't got any yet, but the, there are many of these options to be plugged into the badge. Uh, we also charged for the badge this year for the first time. Part of that was because Sponsorships have been very hard to raise this year, but the main reason was that we didn't want to make things people didn't want. So we've made exactly the right number of badges for everyone who needed one-ish. Um, and I'm pleased to say that if you didn't get one, it turns out the failure rate on these has been much lower than expected. We normally aim for something like 5 to 7%, and it's currently 1. So full credit to the badge team. I will say that's only because the badge team decided to get x-rays of the badge made in China before they came here to be doubly sure that they were OK, and they were definitely not OK. So good work to them. Uh, and the most exciting thing about this is that for the second year running, you can pick your badge up right after this talk at 1 o'clock. So I hope you have fun with them. The software is a little bit prototype. It, <laughs> But we're sticking with it. This is the software we have for the next few badges. It will get better, and it does work surprisingly well already. I hope you do something fun with them. Finally, I've just got some boring things I need to talk about. The most boring one is that all your phones currently think they're in Germany. <laughs> this is because most of our internet access equipment comes from Germany, and it also explains why my phone thought the time zone was wrong, and I got up an hour early for this talk, which I'm really grumpy about. <laughs> It is actually why I got here earlier. It's not even a joke. <laughs> but the reason I'm mentioning this is because talks run at specific times, and if your phone is in the wrong time, you're not going to go to them. So please do check that. Make sure you turn it off on your phone. Turn off the auto switch time zone now. There is also going to be a food bank collection on Sunday at the info desk uh, for any non-perishable items you don't want to take home with you. This, if it looks like there's a lot, maybe don't give us too much, because we do have to get rid of it all at the end of it. But, just anything you can leave behind would be very much appreciated. Um, and I have been reminded by the bar team, I think five times, that there are reusable cups at the bar and you must return the cups this year. Please take them back. If you don't, we get charged for every single cup. And I think to the tune of something like six grand or something, so it's, it's not a small amount. Please do take them back. We've already had a load end up in the bin and they were very angry at me last night. Uh, everyone here is a volunteer. Please be kind to them even when things are going wrong, especially when things are going wrong. And say thanks, 
Just treat them with care and hopefully do some volunteering yourself. Our conduct team are available 24 hours a day. Uh, if you have any problems with other people, or just in general, please contact them. We would rather you called us and said there was an issue than suffered and we heard later. Uh, they are available to help with anything you have that's a problem. And finally, be safe. There are hazardous things on this site, really hazardous things. The people operating them are sensible. But when you get excited with the really exciting, dangerous thing, don't go, get too close to it. Don't like, go and play with other people's things and definitely don't look at the lasers. So it, it, just seriously be careful. Make sure your children aren't running off on their own. It should be OK. Finally, I have to really thank the sponsors this year, possibly more than any year we've ever thanked them. Uh, raising sponsorship this year has been the hardest since we began in 2012. We raised 38% of the amount of sponsorship that we raised in 2022. It's been incredibly hard to get money. And this money pays for many things on site that are really important. It pays for things like the free childcare, it pays for the arcade, it pays for all the transport for speakers you can't afford to get here otherwise. Like we need this money and we, we're just not getting it. And the economy is bad, we understand, things are expensive, but it's been very hard for us. And as a result, we have had to make cuts this year, which we're not happy about. Uh, the main one that, is both noticeable and maybe not noticeable, is that we do not have professional life stenographers doing our captioning this year. Uh, I, I think the captions actually currently aren't turned on, um, which is possibly good, because I don't know, they might say something insulting or something, I don't know. We have automated captioning, it's best effort, it's what we could do. Um, I'm sorry about that, but we just didn't have the money. Uh, hopefully, you'll convince your companies to give us money in 2026, I guess. That was it, have fun. Stay safe on the site. I encourage you to find the weirdest thing you can in the field and then make some friends while you talk about it. It is the most satisfying thing and it's the thing you won't be able to explain to anyone else when you leave. <laughs> Actually, I've just realized, I forgot to put something in here, which I, I, I have to mention. Um, we discovered yesterday, I think it was, um, there is a BBC program which now slips my mind, uh, presented by Alexi Sale on the radio. And um, it's, he gets on a train and talks to people, apparently. And uh, he got on the train to EMF and spoke to people on the train. And um, uh, I believe the quote was something like, uh, I don't know what this festival is, but this train seems to have a lot of people going to it. But <laughs> he interviewed some people. I don't know if any of you are here, and that will be broadcast in July, I believe. So look out for that. I think it's on Radio 4. Uh, that was it. We'll see you on Sunday. Have a lovely time.